Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Happy Solemnity of the Feast of Pentecost. This is the greatest day in the Church's calendar because it's the climax of everything that Jesus accomplished. He died, He rose, He ascended into heaven, and now He sends us the Holy Spirit. This is something to be very, very grateful for because the beauty of the Christian religion is that the end goal, the aim of the Christian religion is the divinization of man, to make man divine, to make man immortal, just as Christ is immortal. So it's something that we should take very seriously and respond to by constant prayer. My hope is that everyone is okay and staying positive amid all the turmoil in the world today. So with that, let's go into the first reading and then we'll continue with the meditations. First reading is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. And when the days of Pentecost were accomplished, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty wind coming and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them parted tongues, as it were, of fire. And it sat upon every one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they began to speak with diverse tongues, according as the Holy Ghost gave them to speak. Now there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded in mind because that, because that every man heard them speak in his own tongue. And they were all amazed and wondered, saying, Behold, are not all these that speak Galileans? And how have we heard every man our own tongue wherein we were born? Parthians and Medes, Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya about Cyrene, and strangers from Rome, Jews also, proselytes, Cretes, Arabians. We have heard them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord my God, Thou art exceedingly great, Thou hast put on praise and beauty. How great are Thy works, O Lord! Thou hast made all things in wisdom. The earth is filled with Thy riches. But if Thou turnest away Thy face, they shall be troubled. They shall take away their breath, and they shall fail, and shall return to their dust. Thou shalt send forth Thy Spirit, and they shall be created, and Thou shalt renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. The Lord shall rejoice in his works. Let my speech be acceptable to him, but I will take delight in the Lord. Second reading, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man, speaking by the Spirit of God, saith anathema to Jesus. And no man can say, the Lord Jesus, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of graces, but the same Spirit. And there are diversities of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but the same God who worketh all in all. And the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man unto profit. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of the body, whereas they are many, yet are one body, so also is Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, whether bond or free, and in one spirit we have all been made to drink. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. I got the, the gospel according to John, according to John chapter 20. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Now, when it was late that same day, the first of the week, and the doors were shut, where the apostles were gathered together for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples therefore were glad when they saw the Lord. He said therefore to them, Peace be to you, peace be to you. As the Father has sent me, also I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them, and he said to them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven them, and whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I mean, great praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sorry. All right. Well, as always, the word is loaded with many different messages for each of us. But I think given the circumstances in the world and in the, in the environment and in our lives, I think we need to focus heavily on a few few ideas from the readings just a handful. Let's go back to the first reading and meditate on something that really caught my attention. Two things in particular. And I'm not, don't think I'm some kind of a prophet or anything. This is just something I picked up from reading the books of uh, Father Reniero Cantalamessa, who's a very keen expert on the Holy Spirit. He's the papal preacher to the household of, uh, to the household of Rome, to the papal, ho papal household. So he's the Pope's preacher. It says that when the days of Pentecost were accomplished, they were all together in one place. And as you know, Pentecost is the harvest festival uh, in Judaism. It's Shavuot, where they celebrate the harvest, the reaping of the harvest. And here we have a spiritual harvest taking place, harvest of souls. And it says they were all together in one place. There's a reason that phrase is in there. They were together in that sentence. They were to all together in one place. In other words, they were in unity. There was unity. And then you have wind coming and filling the whole house. Here we could take it to mean the house where the, 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 the upper room where the apostles were, but also how the Holy Spirit fills our own house, of our, the house of our souls. Okay, and what happens? Good things happen. If you follow the events that succeed this, um, we have, they were filled with the Holy Ghost, they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they were filled with the love of God in person. Can you imagine that feeling they had? Have you ever experienced the Holy Spirit like that? This overflowing sense of love and peace? And what is the fruit of that? They end up talking different languages that everyone can understand. There's no more misunderstanding. There's no more confusion because all those things are of the devil. We have a reversal of the Tower of Babel. Now, there's also an eschatological or uh, end time sort of um, meaning here where here we read that people of all nations or People from different parts of the world are gathered together in one place in Jerusalem. There's a hint at, at Judgment Day when all nations will come together and adore the Lamb of God because of the Holy Ghost. All right. So here we have unity. We have understanding. We have the opposite of what appears to be happening in the world. But don't let the media discourage you while all that's happening, there's also many, there are also many good things happening. Um, churches around the world are praising the Lord today and inviting the Holy Spirit for a new Pentecost. So believe that it will happen. Because God is true to his word. And then it says in, in the psalm, Bless the Lord, O my soul, O, my, o Lord my God, thou art exceedingly great, thou hast put on praise and beauty. So this should be our response to God every day. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, thou art exceedingly great. Because who can understand the works of God, really? Who can understand how the Holy Spirit operates? We just know the Holy Spirit by his gifts, by his fruits. But we don't really understand how we op the operations of the Holy Spirit. Only God knows that. So 
the, the point is to surrender to it. And if we read on in verse 30, it says, Thou shalt send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. So to, to allow the Holy Spirit to enter you and to um, really live by the Spirit is to be a, a new creation. You'll feel like a new person. All the things that used to upset you before don't upset you anymore. If you've got family difficulties, pray to the Holy Spirit, and He'll help you see things as they really are, and you'll respond to everything with love and not with hatred. I know this from personal experience. Now let's go to the Gospel. I'm sorry, uh, to the second reading. No one, can, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Spirit. So every time you pray to Jesus, it's already the Holy Spirit working in you. Because if you were not, if you were not under the influence of the Holy Spirit, you wouldn't be able to pray with faith. You wouldn't be able to even experience faith. So just faith itself is the working of the Holy Spirit. And how we are members of the body. So why would why would Christ cast off members of his own body unless it were rotten through sin? You know, if we repent, we remain. We remain part of his body. So if you've done something wrong, you know, that's against God's commandments, then turn to the Holy Spirit, repent, say, I'm sorry, and really mean it. Really feel it and try your best to get over it. And the Holy Spirit will take over from there. And then if you can, make it to sacramental confession whenever the uh, pandemic goes away. So we're members of the body, and we're one. We all have different gifts. Some of us are parents. Some of us are um, in ministry. Some of us are priests. Some of us, some of us maybe profess religious. Everyone has a specific role. One of the mistakes I think sometimes we make is we force ourselves into a vocation that's not really our vocation. Um, if we're married, we shouldn't be acting like we're in a monastery. And, you know, if you're in a monastery, you shouldn't act like you're married. But you're both called to a devout life. You're both called to uh, a life of holiness, to a life of prayer and, and, and devotion to the Word of God. Okay, so bond or free. You know, it's, another thing is there is no more... We shouldn't be concerned about race. We shouldn't be concerned about culture because we all belong to the one culture, the Holy Spirit culture of the kingdom. So the Holy Spirit allows us to rise above human instinct and to see things as God sees them. It's it's a very, very wonderful feeling to be able to see things that way because then you, you no longer let things get to you. Okay, now let's jump into the gospel. It says it was the first day of the week. I wonder why why they say that. Um, first day of the week was most likely Sunday, and Sunday before Christianity was considered Monday, first day of the week, and then the last day of the week was the Sabbath. So it was the first day of the week and also the last day of the week. So it's kind of one of those uh, in-between days. And it's interesting that Jesus would happen to rise on this day. Most of us think of the first day of the week as, oh no, another week. What am I going to do? What's going to happen this week? I don't know about you, but I, some, I, I get anxious every Monday. Every start of a new week, I get very, very anxious and scared. And by, by, by Friday, I realized I was scared for no reason, that everything worked out fine. Even if there were challenges, things always tend to resolve themselves when I give it up to God. So, in the midst of that, in the midst of that, those uncertainties, Jesus steps in and he says, Peace be with you. And this is the risen Christ who was just betrayed by his friends. He was abandoned. He was abused. He was beaten and crucified, murdered. Every horrible thing that could possibly happen to someone happened to him. And now that he's raised and living by the power of the Holy Spirit, what does he have to say? He doesn't say, Oh boy, are you guys going to get it at Judgment Day? He says, Peace be to you. Shalom. And as a Jew, when you say peace, when you say shalom, it's not just, I hope you have a nice day. It's, I hope that creation and, and the universe and everything are in harmony for you. It's everything. Everything lines up. So it's like Jesus says, it's all good. And... He showed them his hands and his side to show that his his wounds are real. He's connected to our pain. 
his pain was real and your pain is real and he comes to you and he says receive ye the Holy Ghost Father um, Mark Goring if you haven't checked him out he's an amazing charismatic priest he says our prayer every day should be Jesus breathe into us breathe into us because here it says that he breathed on them and they received the Holy Ghost how many times do we need the strength of the Holy Ghost we have the Holy Ghost in baptism and confirmation but most of the time we leave him dormant because he doesn't have much influence in our lives unless we invite him <laughs> excuse me and notice how he links the reception of the Holy Ghost to forgiveness and of course here he's giving them his apostles um, the authority to forgive sins here we see um, evidence of sacramental absolution but we also see something much deeper and the power of God's forgiveness and the power of forgiveness so it seems like forgiveness is the first step towards living a life in the spirit as hard as it seems so I'd like to take this time to enter go past the meditation stage and into the prayer stage or oratio where we say let's say something simple we're, let's respond to Jesus' words and say Breathe into us, Lord Jesus. Breathe into us the Holy Spirit. Please, Lord Jesus, breathe into us the Holy Spirit. We forgive those who have harmed us. We forgive those who are, we, have, we harbored anger towards. We forgive those who are doing damage right now in the world. We ask you to enter their hearts and renew the face of the earth. Breathe into us, Lord Jesus. Please. And now let's rest for a moment in the presence of God. Look deep within yourself and invite the Holy Spirit to those really isolated and de defended parts of ourselves, the parts we refuse to expose to, the, to others, the pain, the suffering, the agony within us that we hide. Let the Holy Spirit in. Uncover it. Bear those wounds. Bear your wounds and invite the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. And I would like to invite everyone to do something. Um, with Pentecost comes a season of ordinary time. Please don't make the mistake of just relaxing your devotion to God, relaxing your practices of the faith, thinking, oh, it's ordinary time, we can just kind of, it's vacation, it's the church's vacation time. No. Ordinary time is where we actually apply the mysteries that we've learned and experienced at, at Easter and at Christmas. Apply those teachings. Peace be with you.